Welcome to Introduction to FireDuck. My name is Paweł Głowacki. I'm working for Embarcadero as EMEA Technical Lead for develop Developer Tools. And today I'm going to present the first in a series of FireDuck skill sprints. So technologies presented in this uh, demonstration uh, works with the latest version of uh, RAD Studio, RAD Studio XC7, and also are available as part of App Method. The latest version of App Method is September release 1.15. FireDuck is a database uh, access uh, platform uh, that make it possible to create applications for both VCL Windows and FireMalky multi-device applications in both uh, Object Pascal language and uh, C++ language. So how skill sprints work? Skill sprints is a, a series of uh, short uh, focused episodes demonstrating just uh, few or just one uh, relevant to developer uh, skills. In this series we are going to uh, focus on FireDuck and uh, there will be uh, 10 uh, different episodes uh, demonstrating different aspects uh, of FireDuck. So it's uh, short and it's followed by the live uh, Q&A and it's uh, going to be presented in di three different uh, time zones. So in this uh, introduction to FireDuck uh, episode I'm going to uh, spent a little bit of time uh, explaining what uh, FireDuck is and what are the key things in his in its architecture. We are going to discuss uh, which uh, database uh, you can connect to uh, with FireDuck and I'm going to follow this with a, a demonstration of creating a, a small database uh, browser application using TFD table component and provide uh, different options of uh, working with connections uh, in a, a FireDuck applications and specifically how not to hard code database uh, connection information in your uh, executable. So FireDuck uh, is uh, one of the many database access uh, technologies that are available as part of uh, RAD Studio XC7, so both Delphi XC7 and C++ Builder uh, XC7, and it is the only option in uh, app method. It provides uh, very performant uh, connectivity to uh, enterprise uh, databases, standalone remote databases like Oracle, like SQL Server, uh, like IBM DB2, but also provide access to databases uh, that are desktop databases or embedded databases. It supports uh, multiple different uh, databases and one of its uh, goals is to provide universal data access so you can create applications that using uh, SQL preprocessing, using uh, field type mapping, that single compiled executable can work with no changes uh, with different uh, database uh, types. Also it supports uh, multiple uh, different uh, specific features that are uh, different uh, from one database platform to another. Another key feature of FireDuck is that it's very simple to deploy. You don't need to provide uh, any uh, FireDuck drivers along with your executable. All drivers are compiled directly into the executable and also what is nice is that FireDuck comes with the uh, full source code so if you want to understand uh, more how FireDuck uh, works you can have a look uh, into the source code to understand inner workings of FireDuck. Another nice feature about FireDuck is that uh, it has been architected uh, to be compatible with the BDE so the Boland database engine the old technology of Delphi and C++ Builder uh, there are one-to-one -one relationships between uh, components like uh, T database and uh, FireDuck connection or T table in BD or TFD table that I'm going to demonstrate uh, today. It's also very easy uh, to migrate existing BD applications to uh, FireDuck. Okay, FireDuck uh, looking at the architecture, so this is a very popular um, graphics. It can work with both uh, Delphi and C++ Builder, so you can use Object Pascal or C++ programming languages uh, to create to use uh, different frameworks, so you can create uh, Windows uh, VCL applications or multi-device uh, FireMonkey applications, and the Fire, FireDuck components uh, are the same. They let you connect to uh, different uh, databases, but also uh, you can connect to databases uh, through uh, ODBC or uh, DB Express. So this is really a big range of uh, databases uh, you can connect to. 
In this uh, presentation, I'm going to use uh, Interbase. Uh, Interbase is a, a Embarcadero uh, database. Uh, it comes in two flavors, so as a remote uh, database management system so you can install uh, Interbase uh, on a dedicated server and you can access uh, this uh, database uh, remotely uh, or you can also use Interbase locally so this is in case of my uh, demo setup I have Interbase installed on the same machine uh, as my application is going uh, to work with so if you want to connect uh, to remote databases databases uh, that are in a different machine in the network you need to have at least enterprise version of Delphi uh, or C++ Builder or you can if you have professional version you can upgrade to this uh, capability uh, with a client server pack it's also possible to use FireDuck for connecting to embedded databases uh, um, databases like uh, uh, IB Light, uh, IB to go or SQL Light, so for both uh, mobile applications or even desktop application, this is a new feature in XC7 possibility to connect uh, to embedded databases uh, from uh, desktop applications. Okay, let's go uh, into uh, demonstration. It's all about being uh, practical. So I'm going to uh, use an uh, example from the world of divers, uh, scuba diving. Uh, so I have an existing uh, Interbase database with a fictional, uh, for a fictional uh, scuba diving equipment shop. So we are going to build a small um, application, VCL Forms Delphi application for uh, working with data about different parts of uh, scuba equipment. So in this uh, example I'm going to demonstrate using FD table component for a flexible database access and also discuss different options to connect to the database and specifically how to create an application with FireDuck so you don't have to hard code a database access information inside uh, of your uh, executable. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, with uh, moving to to, to Delphi and RAD Studio. Uh, another nice thing about uh, FireDuck is it is very nicely uh, documented. You can find on Embarcadero website in a docs section uh, online documentation uh, of um, FireDuck. Okay, I'm going to switch to RAD Studio and uh, before I start with creating an application notice on the right hand side uh, of the screen there is a, a data explorer window and here is a FireDuck data explorer you can browse through different uh, databases so specifically I have uh, configured access to my uh, scuba shop uh, database so if I click on modify you can see this is the location of my scuba shop uh, interbase database uh, file with other uh, connection information uh, provided I can click on test if I can actually connect to this database I can connect I can use data uh, explorer to create connection to databases like this scuba shop but I can also use Use it to work with a database. I can uh, browse uh, through different database. So, for example, I have this parts table. So I can preview its structure. It has the fields, part number, vendor number, description. But also I can see what is the primary key uh, on this uh, database and what are the different indices. And also what I can do is to preview the actual records from a table I want to uh, create an uh, application for. So this is very useful uh, data and base uh, explorer. You can also use this uh, to work with a, uh, with a database. I can uh, execute arbitrary SQL statement uh, against the connected uh, database. So uh, any DDL or DML uh, SQL statement will work. I can just select something from parts and click on execute to see the different uh, data in my database but I could do things like delete from parts and uh, other uh, more destructive uh, statements okay so this is a database uh, table I want uh, to work with I'm going to create a new VCL forms uh, Delphi application I'm going to uh, to save it so I can remember uh, what it is so it's going to be called uh, scuba in a new folder it's important scuba shop one and uh, I'm going to 
uh, enforce some good programming practices like giving uh, meaningful names to your uh, objects. So I'm going to save this main form of my application as U uh, form main and the project will be called scuba shop. Okay, scuba shop one maybe. Click on save. So I'm going to change the caption of the form to scuba shop and the name of the form instead of form 23 to something more meaningful form main. So this is a visual form, visual VCL form. I can put some visual components and it's not a good practice to put a non-visual components like a database access components uh, on the visual form. So the good practice is to actually create a new data module. Data module can be added to the project and this is a more natural place for non-visual components like FireDuck database access components. Again I'm going to save my unit 1 as U data module 1. So this is uh, going to be my place for different FireDuck uh, components. So before I continue I need to make a connection between my visual form and my non-visual data module. So in order to be able to access components on a data module, I need to add this data module to the users clause of my main form. So click on data module, add to the users clause. So now I can see that this data module is in a users clause uh, of my main form. Okay, so now I can work with uh, components. So the components in the tool palette, notice on the right hand side uh, there are different components in five different categories and one of them is FireDuck. Probably the most important component here is a FD connection. This component uh, represents a database uh, connection to the database. I can double click it and you can see this is the same window as I have uh, seen uh, in the Data Explorer, provides the same uh, functionality. So you can specify the name of the uh, driver, so what type of a database uh, you want to use, uh, and then I need to provide things like location of a database, so for example can click, can go ahead and look where is my databases and this is my scuba shop and then I can provide a sys DBA as a username master key as a password so these are standard interface uh, things and location of my uh, server so this is a IP address of the local host I can click on test to see if everything is okay connection can be established successfully click on OK it's a good idea to turn the login prompt to off so it does not have to provide username and password every time I con connect to the database. So now in the FD connection component if I go to the params property I can see that all information about my database is now embedded inside of the uh, executable. So once I compile this application and deploy it on a different machine I will need to make sure that this is exactly the same location and it has local server. Maybe after the time I would like to actually change the username to something non-standard. So instead of, of hard coding the database uh, information inside of my uh, database application, I can use an alias. So instead of, I have already defined the connection in the data explorer uh, and has all this information inside of the uh, FireDuck connection editor. Another place to work with connections is in the tools. FireDuck Explorer provides very uh, similar uh, capabilities. And uh, you can see on this, uh, in this tool that all connection definitions are stored in the INI file. So this is the location of the INI file that stores information about the databases. So now I'm going to change this to, instead of providing the information here, I just go going to select one of the predefined connections like scuba shop, click on test and now I can actually see that I can now connect to the database and if I now go to the parameters I don't see all the information uh, 
about the scuba shop location and username it is just a name of the connection so the application when it's run it will look up into the ini file uh, to find out information from the scuba shop so that's the uh, the first thing not to hard code uh, database information in your database another clever way of adding connection to the database when it's already connected is to drag it on the form so you can do it like this and if I double click here I can very quickly see that everything is already pre-configured for me I have connected to my uh, specific uh, connection so that's a faster way so I'm going to get rid of this old component and that's probably the best way is to actually drag the connection to the to the form so now that I can connect to the uh, database click on login prompt to false is already disconnected let's see if I can connect I'm going to add a TFD table component so this is the component that I that is already connected to my connection property so there is a connection between these two components and this component represents a database table I can specify the name of the table using a drop-down so parts drop-down and uh, it's a good idea to actually change the name of this table to s that I know instead of table 1 to be FDT parts so I know that this is a, a database table component that uh, points to a specific table so the next step so is actually to see if it's working active to true or not I'm going to add a T data source component to the this data module I'm going to connect this data source to my parts data set so these components are all connected and also to change the name to DS part so I know which component it is in a simple application it's not so important but when I have many tables many data sources is quite critical to give them a proper names okay I'm going to go to the form main and here I'm going to build a, a visual interface panel on the form I'm going to align it to the top and on the, this panel I'm going to add a checkbox that I will be using to connect or disconnect from a, a database or from a specific table I'm going to change the name of the caption to active and in the code I'm going to write a code that in the data module that I have uh, connected here there is this FD parts uh, component and it has active uh, property and depending on uh, whether this checkbox is uh, selected or not I'm going to uh, add it Spe checkbox like this checkbox one checked so that's a good property but maybe this checkbox is not a good name I can actually quickly change the name using the refactoring change the names from the checkbox to chkbx parts active so I know exactly what this checkbox is doing click on OK click see all the places when it they are affected and now I can quickly change the name of this checkbox okay so this uh, I have already a possibility to open and uh, close uh, the table I going to add two more components uh, TDB navigator component for uh, moving through the data sets I'm going to add it to the panel and in the most of the form will be occupied by the DB grid component this DB grid component will be uh, aligned to client and I can select both components DB navigator and DB grid with a with a, uh, a shift so they are both of them are selected at the same time and I need to connect them to the data source so they display information okay let's run this application okay click on active oh, I get an error message so that was something that I was expecting and this is another feature of FireDuck that it provides a very informative error messages I know exactly that I'm missing TFD GUI X weight cursor component somewhere in my application for it to work so I'm going to add this TFD GUI uh, weight cursor component uh, to the data module click uh, on OK in fact what it really does is to add certain units to the users close of my application so right now I can safely remove it and it will work like it would without it so I can now run it 
click on active and here we go our application uh, is working okay so now we didn't hard coded the uh, application uh, to the, the um, to the actual uh, executable but still we are using this global ini file but what if we don't have uh, Delphi uh, or RAD Studio installed on this machine when I want to deploy this to another uh, place uh, I can see where is my application so this is another useful tip when you select uh, executable name in the project manager in the object inspector you can see the actual path uh, to this file so I can click on uh, some of the I can paste copy and paste this into the Windows Explorer to directly jump to the place where my application is okay so here is my executable so in order not to hard code information about the uh, mm, location of a database I need to go to the users uh, public public documents um, Embarcadero, Studio, uh, FireDuck, and here is an FD connection definitions file. I need to take this file and uh, copy it to the uh, location where uh, I was before. So I'm going to take this and copy it, and then I'm going to jump to my projects, and this is on my. I'm going to open another users Pavel my documents Barcadero studio projects and here you in the scuba I uh, have this scuba shop and this is the place to put my ini file I'm going to paste it here if I open it here I can open it with notepad so there are all the connections I don't need them I only care about scuba shop so I can easily delete them click on save and now if this file is in the same directory in, as my executable I can specify the connection information uh, from here so let me actually go out of my uh, environment and I can click on let's see what where is my applications in notepad it's in a databases scuba shop so I can now run it as administrator doesn't really matter and I can successfully connect to it but oh, what if I want to move my application to some other place so I'm going to use uh, I want to put my scuba shop file to other databases and I will go to the databases and delete it from the databases so it's no longer there click on OK so OK it's it's kept by my application so I need to uh, stop the application or even stop the whole uh, environment so it's no longer there now I should be able to get rid of the scuba shoop file okay and now if I go again to my file and try to run it as a standalone application okay because it was already running so I need to run it again it will give me some errors that it's no longer there because I have deleted it so now I can go to the my connections and change the location of a database to other databases click on save and now if I run this application it should be okay so in this way I have not hard-coded the uh, database location and other uh, database uh, proper database connection properties inside of the executable I can use a standalone ini file to read this information so I don't have to recompile my application every time uh, I move uh, with a different uh, database location or different database types okay so that was the first uh, FireDuck skill sprint on introduction to FireDuck uh, we have touched on the uh, architecture of FireDuck and some of the uh, 
first steps to uh, get a simple uh, database application up and running we were using a TFD table component uh, to connect to the database uh, from a VCL uh, Delphi uh, application so in a week from now uh, there will be a second uh, Fireduck skill sprints uh, monitoring and tracing so stay tuned uh, there is plenty of uh, information about the Fireduck on our uh, website docsembarcadero.com slash products slash radstudio underscore studio slash fireduck and uh, now let's start the live Q&A thank you very much I think it was Paul asked a couple times there was this question and maybe confusion about do you have to deploy any DLLs and with fireduck the answer is no right Pavel but but you'll still need drivers, whatever is available for the database itself somewhere? Yes, correct. So you can actually uh, can have a look at the at demos that comes with the installation of RAD Studio. There is like one master demo and uh, in order to get uh, drivers uh, compiled uh, into your application for a given uh, database, you need to add a certain units to the users clause somewhere in your project. So the easiest way uh, is to actually uh, add uh, a s specific uh, component. So there is a whole uh, category on a tool palette FireDuck links, and there are uh, different components with names that start with a TFD. F H Y S, and you can see from the name for which uh, database they are, and you can just drop uh, this unit uh, in one place of your application, and the appropriate uh, um, units will be added to the users clause. So that's all that is necessary uh, to add uh, support for a certain uh, database. In fact, I have not uh, have to do it uh, because I have selected. Uh, in the um, connection editor when you select a specific driver it is also enough that uh, specific uh, units will be added to the users clause. so that's uh, true you don't need to to deploy anything uh, any DLLs like for example in DB Express it's only your executable and everything is compiled in of course you need to have uh, the, the specific bits of a uh, uh, database you want to connect to so for example client libraries of a specific database you want to connect to yeah like for SQL server it's what is it something like MS client DLL or whatever they're calling it these days um, at the same time I, I mentioned that if you really want a, a, a thin client that you're deploying somewhere you could then use something like data snap or enterprise mobility services or rest server soap server if you want to connect to another machine which has the Oracle drivers that may talk to another tier that has the Oracle database so there's many possibilities architecturally but again as Pavel says for FireDAC itself when you put those components down including including the physical link component that's all linked into your executable there's no other DB Express DLLs or anything else like that um, let's see I think there was a nice question from Alf, and I th that's something you have already mentioned, uh, David. It's uh, about uh, using FireDuck uh, on a server side. So uh, you can use uh, FireDuck in the context uh, of a, on the server application. So, for example, if you want to have a data snap uh, server, you can use FireDuck to access database from the server, and this is independent from the actual client server technology that you are using. So you can have a FireDuck uh, as part of your server application if it's a data snap server, if, if it is an uh, enterprise mobility services uh, package, or if it's just, uh, for example, a web service server. So this is completely independent, and this is just technology to access the application uh, the database from an application. This could be also a, a server-side application. Yep. Um, and then you answered the question and you also showed you can put that uh, FD connection INI file wherever you want. Right, Pavel? Yeah, it's, it has to be visible to your executable. So if you put it in the same directory as your executable, then it will be picked up uh, by the executable and uh, the contents of it will be read. But in the, if you have a Delphi installed, there is this uh, global FDEG connection ini file somewhere on the path, so your application will also uh, find it. But this is, I think, that probably the one 
most important thing I wanted to actually kick uh, off uh, this uh, series of FireDuck with uh, really working with connections because every single FireDuck application needs to have an at least one uh, connection component. So it's nice to understand how not to hard code database information in the executable. That was another actually question um, regarding uh, reading uh, location of a database from the registry. So there is actually a third technique that I have not actually uh, demonstrated. Uh, you can manually add uh, the connection information to the params property uh, of your connection. So you can, for example, uh, read from a certain key in the registry and provide uh, build the params uh, programmatically. So it's also possible to, for example, keep this connection information in the registry if you like. Yeah, and then uh, um, there was a, com or a question here about replacing if he's using T SQL query data set provider client data set with FireDuck components. There's a couple things. Number one, you could re you could keep the data set provider and client data set, but have the SQL query and and SQL connection from you could have those be FireDAC. Now FireDAC comes with an, an FD mem table like client data set, but it's not completely one for one plug compatible with functionality of client data set, but it's an in memory data set and you can do all sorts of operations on it. You can save files locally, save the data locally in different formats and so on, like like you can client data set, but it doesn't have things like the aggregations that client data set did, but you can uh, use FD connection, FD query uh, in replace of SQL connection, T-SQL query and leave the rest, or you could move completely to using FireDAC components and FD mem table. And Kerry Jensen uh, showed that in October of 2013 in his RAD in action, and there's been code rage sessions about all of that as well. So. Uh, check out the Rat in Action with Kerry Jensen from, I think it was October 2013 uh, for that one. Um, let's see, can passwords in, in the INI file, and it's probably just passwords in general, be obfuscated? Uh, you could choose to encrypt however you want uh, sensitive information, whether it's in the registry, INI files, or whatever. That's all on your own uh, for you to do. Um, you know anything about, uh, let's see, can Inno setup modify the path to database and INI file? I, I haven't used Inno setup, but if, uh, if it's like any other install programs, you can do just about anything you want to create files, modify files, and so on. Alf, I, uh, you should check the documentation for Inno setup uh, to figure out what it can do to, to change text inside of any given file or to create a file on the fly as part of your setup. Let's see. Uh, here's one. I, I haven't read all of these now, so we're on the wild side for a couple of minutes. Let's see. If I wanted to have multiple FireDuck apps I've built in different directories and share the connection desks, um, where should I? He's asking, Mike's asking, where should he put the connection def file? Um, I guess you could put it anywhere that all of those FD apps can get to. Are you yeah, somewhere on the putting path? it in the set in the same folder as the executable, but it can be anywhere as long as you have the path to it, right? Yeah. So if, as long as it is visible to the uh, your application somewhere on the path, uh, it should be. It's possible to find by the application. So it's really up to how you want to set it up. Yep. Yeah, I think it's also possible to. Uh, use a registry key to indicate where that file is, but it, it don't remember the details. Yep. Yes, actually, that is one of the things that uh, we have been doing uh, a workshop on FireDuck uh, in Poland uh, back in the uh, last uh, Q4 in Warsaw, and we have been uh, actually sometimes uh, there is this FD home um, uh, registry key. And uh, if you have multiple versions of uh, of RAT Studio installed, sometimes it can point to a wrong location. So if for some reason your application cannot find it, the key is FD Home, and you need to make sure that you set it to appropriate location. Important thing is to realize that uh, the FireDuck uh, directory 
uh, is independent of the version of the RAD Studio you have installed. So you have seen when I was looking for the FD connections uh, IMI file, it is not in the under studio and the number of the studio version, but it is in the FireDAC. So keep in mind that this could be shared between different versions uh, of, uh, of RAD Studio and possibly leading to error. So just something to have to keep an eye. Yeah. Okay. And Jens is saying yes, in a setup can do that. Thanks, Jens. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you push FD mem tables to mobile devices? Yes, FD mem tables, you can save them as, I know you can save as JSON. Uh, it's or as binary. XML as well, I think, right? Yeah, and then bina binary probably is the most yeah. efficient, but you can use it as a JSON as well. Yep. The question was, uh, what is the advantage of using predefined connections? So the connections, so the idea here is not to hard code uh, this into executable, so when you want to change the user name, password, or the location, or the database, you don't have to hard recompile the whole application. You can just change the contents of the ini file, so sometimes you may not have the, the RAD Studio uh, to, and the project to recompile it, so that's the advantage of having the connection information outside of your compiled executable. There was also a question about support for FireDuck, uh, Firebird 3 and to be honest I'm not sure if it is supported or not. The policy is to support the latest versions of uh, databases but I'm not sure if it's uh, Firebird 3 is supported or not. Yeah, it is one of the supported databases. Yeah, all I know is when I went to the, the documentation and the fact sheet, it just said 1.5 and later, but uh, all, we can follow up with, uh, with the team to make sure, with Dimitri to make sure, and, uh, and add that maybe in a blog post, Pavel? Yeah, definitely. I think that would be nice to have a list of the versions supported uh, just for the reference in case of this kind of questions. Uh, there was a question regarding the professional version and what are the limitations. Uh, so that's was something I have been discussing yesterday with Marco on the Skype. Uh, but uh, the main uh, limitation is uh, also in other technologies like for example DB Express is not in the, you need to have an enterprise version of uh, Delphi, C++ Builder of RAD Studio to connect to a remote database. So if their database is on a remote machine in the network or in the internet, you need to have an enterprise version. If you have a professional version, you can connect to the local databases, so to the locally installed interbase or a flat file uh, databases, like for example, access is uh, supported. So you get a FireDuck in a professional version, but without the possibility to connect to a remote database. If you want to have a, if you have professional version and you want to have this a full FireDuck capabilities without uh, upgrading to enterprise, you can get a separate client server pack. It is available separately. You can install it on top of the professional and then you get a full uh, power of, uh, of FireDuck. Yep. I don't see much more question. There was a question from Alf regarding connection pooling. So the connection pooling is, some, is a feature that is built in into the uh, FireDuck, so you can just configure it to, to use a connection pooling uh, without uh, special uh, programming. Yeah, you can find our blogs on the community site. So if anybody, if you are not uh, aware of community.embarcadero.com, so this is the place to go for all kind of information. There are also other blogs. And like David's blog, my blog, Marco blog is also aggregated there. So for any questions, there is also a very nice uh, answers and or actually questions and forums and tutorials. So community.embarcadero.com is the place to go for to get all information and get answers to your questions. But this is probably more about specific conversation between Peter and Marco. So not sure okay. how to handle so this. Peter, question. keep uh, keep working with Marco. Uh, Marco, you can see Peter's uh, uh, question maybe there. Yeah, we had a ch an ongoing chat on on, on <laughs> Facebook, and I've asked um, another person who's has more experience than me, which I'd be like to actually um, help figuring out what's what's wrong. 
Robert was asking about storing passwords unencrypted in connection I and I files. I think we both answered that an I files are text files and and that if yeah. that you can always write code to load a password from some encrypted file somewhere or do your own LDAP or whatever you do for adding other kinds of logins to your applications uh, in a secure fashion. And then you would set the password parameter uh, for the FD connection uh, component and then do yeah. an activate or connect or whatever. Yes, I would like to add to, to this uh, skill sprint. Uh, actually, uh, I have demonstrated uh, two ways of uh, setting up the connection to the database. Uh, so one was uh, through uh, setting up the connection properties uh, params uh, during the design time and that was uh, the hard-coded version of the connection property and then uh, using uh, alias so you don't hard code the information about the database connection inside of the executable but it's outside uh, inside of the ini file uh, so in this case th this is how it works that the ini file is not uh, encrypted but uh, the Assumption is that the ini file is safe and your executable is not accessible uh, to anybody. Uh, and the third possibility is to actually programmatically uh, build the params uh, uh, property of the uh, FD connection component. So in this case, you would programmatically uh, add this uh, information to the params uh, property of the FD connection. And this could co could come, for example, fr from the registry or uh, possibly from some other custom store, maybe uh, from the encrypted uh, uh, um, yeah, store, these kind of things. So that's a, that's a lot of uh, flexibility. What is important and something that uh, uh, we have touched uh, on, on the, in the previous uh, uh, this webinar for the European time zone uh, was, and the Asia time zone was really uh, that uh, you, in order to be able to connect to the database, you need to make sure that the uh, drivers are uh, compiled into the uh, executable. Uh, so if you, uh, in, in our case, uh, in the case that was demonstrated in this uh, skill sprint, we were using uh, Interbase and the Interbase driver uh, was uh, compiled into the application through uh, the presence of certain units in the user's clause. If you uh, plan to support other databases, you need to make sure that you add uh, specific uh, units to the users clause. The easiest way to do so is to uh, through adding uh, uh, components uh, through, through the um, FireDuck links um, category. So these are the uh, components with the TFD, FHYS, uh, starting from this uh, sequence and then there is a name of the uh, database so you need the, the whole the, the, the sole role the sole purpose of these components is to add uh, specific uh, units to compile uh, the driver so that's uh, the only thing you need to do and then Robert followed up uh, about what event or location recommended for specifying username and password um, you could, uh, you could, there's an event uh, before connect. Um, if you've got some logic somewhere that's turning on the connection or c connecting the fire DAC with FD connection uh, to turning that on, I would do before connect if you want to do it event based. Otherwise, whatever it is that you would do when the user maybe did file open database uh, through a menu or some other mechanism, uh, you could put code there, but uh, before connect is probably a good time to uh, to set any additional parameters before the connect actually happens. So check out before connect and after connect. Um, let's see, Helga, uh, bad idea of FD connection to SINI file in the applications directory and make an application specific on I file. Again, you have all the choices and possibilities about whether you want an INI file, where you want to put it, uh, can be put anywhere um, as long as the application can get to that spot, and also where you put your applications. So this was just for demonstration purposes Pavel was doing uh, by putting it in the same directory as the executable itself, but you can put it anywhere. 
or not even use it as Pavel mentions. Um, I, I generally it comes to, to passwords. If you're going to store a password, that's only if you're not concerned about people getting that password. Anytime you're storing it, it's not secure, or <laughs> whether you encrypt it or not. Prompt the user for it. Yeah, if it's secure, prompt the user for it, and then let them authenticate against the database yeah. or authenticate against something else. But yeah. But if it's a turnkey application that sits there and runs at midnight or whatever, right. data concentration or something, then there's all the other mechanisms. And the password that they're that you hard code is not going to be the root password. It's going to be the the user level password. No, it's going to be one two three four five six. That's right. <laughs> oh, sorry, bad joke on the top used password from 2014 and 2013 and 2012 and on. A, okay, um, is a change of database possible? And easiest, straightforward is changing the location. So if you've got code and components, Pavel, that's talking to Interbase, and you migrate your data model, uh, metadata, and data to Oracle, you just change the database type? Yes, exactly. Actually, that was something that I mentioned in my uh, previous comment. Uh, so if you want to uh, be able to connect uh, to a different uh, database like Oracle, you just need to make sure that you have this Oracle specific units added to your uh, executable, so there is driver is compiled into the executable, and then it's just a method of changing the uh, the params. So you, instead of specifying interbase, you specify, specify uh, Oracle, and this is actually the beauty of uh, FireDuck that it was designed with this capability in mind. So uh, using uh, that's something we are going to uh, cover in a future uh, um, FireDuck skill sprints. Uh, but you can design your application that is uh, really can work uh, with no changes compiled. Executable can connect to both uh, Interbase and Oracle SQL Server. There are ways to do uh, to work with uh, differences uh, in SQL uh, languages or SQL dialects uh, across different databases. So some. Uh, databases have slightly different uh, SQL, so uh, FireDuck has a great uh, preprocessing uh, functionality uh, for SQL, so it can adapt the actual SQL that is sent to the database to work with it. But uh, also there are possibility to have a, a field uh, type mapping, uh, so a different uh, underlying database uh, field types can map into the different persisted uh, Delphi or C++ Builder uh, fields. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, ways to make sure that the same executable that is compiled once can work with no changes across different database platforms. So definitely, yes, you can actually just by changing the parameters uh, in your in your uh, um, yeah, ini file, you can connect to a, not only to a database in a different location, but in a completely different database as long as a uh, yeah. The table structures are the same, so yeah, the names of the database uh, tables and fields are the same. But otherwise, you can do it definitely. Can you uh, create aliases on the fly in code at runtime? Uh, yeah, that, that's actually the good question. But prob probably, you, if you really want to do it, you probably can uh, work programmatically with this particular ini file uh, somewhere in your. Uh, in your uh, system the very same way like you can programmatically create uh, params for your connection inside of the application maybe you can also do it uh, at the level of the yeah, ID you could probably look into the FD connection in e file and uh, yeah change it programmatically but probably I don't really see a very big uh, reason why to do so yeah let's see is there a way to use Windows authentication? Uh, yeah, call the Windows API. Uh, we don't have a drop down, drop in LDAP or Windows authentication component, but if it's Windows, you have the Windows API you can call. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that's uh, that, that's true. So there's plenty of things that there are not really. Uh, componentized, so there are no specific components for talking to Elda, but there's plenty of examples uh, uh, in the in the internet that demonstrates how to actually call from Delphi different uh, Windows uh, specific functionality like integrating with LDAP, so that should not be a problem, and that that would be a natural thing. I, I think 
important thing to actually understand if you, because the, the security is something that everybody is really keen on having it in a proper way. So the one thing is actually the, the, the security of the application itself. And the second thing is the, 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 the security at the level of the privileges uh, of, the, of the user. So in many cases, you would like to have this username and password that is not really particularly attached to any specific user of the application. It's more about assigning this username and password to the application itself and then based on the connection to the database that you can continue to actually possibly look uh, up the username and password in a, a user's uh, database table at the server and find out if the user can go further within your application. So that's, I, I think, quite critical thing to understand. So not always you want to really provide this username and password just to be able to physically make a connection to the database. In most situations, you would like to be able to, for the system to be fully functional, like the client can connect to the backend, and then you will have a, another layer of username and password to connect to the specific functionality. So I think it's important. In case of, for example, Amazon Web Services, uh, there is an identity um, uh, administration, so you can create users on behalf of a certain user that you can then grant access to a specific resources, specific services. So in this way, even if you put the username and password in an unencrypted, in an unencrypted uh, fashion in your INI file, you are not really sacrificing the the, the security of the overall system. Okay, there were a couple of people asking about ODBC, and as Pavel mentioned, there's an ODBC bridge for Firedac. So if you've got existing ODBC connections, you can use those with Firedac. Just connect to them. Um, a couple of people were asking about uh, about any tools for converting, for example, an access database to something else like SQL Server and and also creating the SQL script. We don't have anything like that specifically. I, I don't know if Microsoft has a has an access to SQL Server migrator and SQL generator. Do you know of anything, Pavel? I, would, I was going on Google for... Yeah, I think this, this is something if you've been... Uh, you have been, David, with, with uh, this technology for many, many years, and uh, access is like so much data, like paradox was, and the paradox in many situations was so much better than uh, access. So the great news is that uh, in FireDuck we have an ODBC bridge and also DB Express bridge, uh, so you can uh, connect to directly to a specific database, but you can also connect to the databases that are accessible for example, through the ODBC. But uh, the, the real thing is, uh, one thing is uh, upgrading the database itself. So this is really independent from the FireDuck. The FireDuck provides options for connecting to different databases, but then if you have an existing application that has a, a Microsoft Access database behind it, then you need to, first of all, take the, this data access database or maybe paradox database or t-based database and convert it or migrate it into a new generation database, maybe a interbase or maybe SQL Server. So this is really a separate thing from the FireDuck, but the FireDuck itself can connect to all those uh, different databases. So that's a, the, the nice thing. So if you design your application in the proper way, uh, you should be able to connect to your migrated database with no changes, but there are different tools. I, I'm, I'm going to one of the uh, presentations uh, we are going to have in this skill sprint session is about the ETL, Extract, Transform and Load. In X7 version of uh, RAD Studio we got some uh, new components and that's something that we are going to have a number of different presenters in these 10 weeks of uh, FireDuck skill sprints 
but ETL I like try to keep to myself because I think that's some good uh, functionality and I hope to be able to, to show some of the possibilities how you can migrate uh, data and database uh, metadata from one platform to another using the FireDuck itself, but still it is a separated thing. First you need to migrate database and data to a different platform and a different, on a different layer we have an application that can talk to a, a different databases. Yeah, and I put a link to Microsoft has a knowledge base article, they have an upsizing wizard, they have a, a SQL Server data transformation services, and then Quinn, Quinn mentioned that uh, we have a batch TFD batch move component that can move data, so if you have a go through ODBC with access and then uh, have another FD connection that points to Interbase or wherever, uh, you could play with the batch move. And I, I don't know, Pavela, let me go back to the skill sprint list. Do we cover batch move? So uh, we have an ETL. Uh, Pardon? But in fact, uh, the, 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 we have the, this uh, batch move and then data move, uh, so that the FD data move is like an uh, obsolete, the new component was introduced in XC7 is batch move, yeah. uh, so that's a component you can use to actually uh, connect a reader and writer to actually transfer data from like arbitrary source to arbitrary target, so that's something we're going to really uh, go deeper on the, I believe in like in five weeks from one hour, I think there's a specific uh, ETL uh, skill sprint we're going to talk about it. Yeah, that's on March 5th. And then I'm doing the last one, which is the BDE to interbase migration, where Clever Components has an interbase data pump. So you can take Paradox data, anything through ODBC, and it converts the metadata and data over to interbase. And so, there, and there's a, on the FireDuck doc wiki, there's a whole two, sort of multi step process with some guidance and uh, for converting. Uh, the application code for Delphi as well. There's not a C++ script for conversion, but uh, you can migrate the data, metadata, and the components. And then if you have to modify some code, then there's the guidance for what, and you can look at what the refined script does for the Delphi code and, and come up with a similar, make the similar changes if you've got a C++ builder app. So that's coming on March 26th, but ETL is on March 5th. Yeah, I, actually I was, uh, so as part of the uh, RAD Studio XC7 uh, installation, uh, there is also this um, refined uh, command line tool, and there is also an uh, um, existing demo, or demo must SQL. So this is actually the data that I was demonstrating today. Uh, about the scuba diving, I really like to scuba dive, so that's something my one of my passions. Uh, so that was no brainer to use it. But that there is an exist this uh, demo, one of these tables that I've demonstrated today, is uh, actually a DBase uh, table, and uh, it and there is an also Delphi Seven uh, application that is BD VCL and uh, that. It is an example that is installed as part of the XC7 exam, uh, installation, how to use refined uh, to convert from BDE to, uh, to, to, um, to FireDuck. And also there are more steps uh, involved, like creating aliases and changing a few lines of code, but it's still a semi-automatic and not very manual lab laborious uh, process. Yeah, so you can just go, uh, there's a doc wiki whole section for FireDuck. Uh, and you can go look at the batch move component. It's got it talks about the reader, the writer, the data set reader, writer, the uh, SQL reader, writer, and so on. So uh, there's good stuff there. Just a reminder, everybody, before we uh, end this, uh, if you want to save the question log, it's under File, uh, Save Question Log. Uh, let me put up uh, a couple other things here. Here's the upcoming schedule as Pavel had for the FireDuck skill sprints. We're also doing, on Tuesdays, the developer skill sprints. Uh, we had the first one uh, on Tuesday with Serena about multi-device apps, making sure they work on the latest iPhones. And that replay is up here on the uh, with the new tag on the link. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel for developer skill sprints, and we'll create a 
YouTube playlist for uh, the Fire Duck Skill Sprints. I'll, I'll do that when I create the replay. Also, on Fridays at, at 6 a.m. and 11 a.m., uh, starting tomorrow, we'll have a Technology Partner Spotlights. It's about a 20-minute demonstration of their technologies. Tomorrow is Ray Kanopka and Ray's software, so you can uh, register each of these skill sprints and these spotlights are separate registration for the whole series. You just choose uh, the time that you want. So uh, check those out, and uh, and maybe we'll see you tomorrow with Ray Kanopka on the 23rd, and then Dev Express, TMS, Fast Reports, and other partners that I'm working with. So each week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday this quarter, uh, developer skill sprint, a uh, wide range of topics for XE7, FireDAC on Thursday, uh, 10 topics uh, with FireDAC, and then the Friday uh, Technology Partner Spotlights. And everybody, take care. We'll see you next time somewhere on one of these online events.